Hey, what is going on guys? In this video today, we're going to be going over how to abuse aim assist on controller in Fortnite Season 5. Much like with all the new seasons really, Season 5 made some pretty massive changes to the loot pool and the overall weapon meta, and that obviously means that certain aspects of abusing aim assist have changed as well. Also, speaking of aim assist, I actually want to ask you guys a simple question at the beginning of this video. I've seen a decent amount of tweets pop up since the start of Season 5 from some pretty trusted pros, and they seem to believe that aim assist was tweaked in some way with the new update. I know I know with pretty much any new update you could probably find at least one or two people who convinced themselves that aim assist was changed, but this time seems different than that, so I thought I'd ask you guys if you've noticed any kind of change just to get a much bigger sample size. So that covers that, and without further ado, let's get right into how to abuse aim assist. Alright, so let's start off with the ARs, and I expect this to be a bit of a shorter section because not too much has changed. As of right now, there's technically three slash four different ARs in the game. The regular ARs, the scars, the heavy ARs, and the tactical ARs. However, the tactical ARs can only be acquired by killing the IO guard AIs that spawn randomly on certain parts of the map, so I'm not really going to say too much about them because unless you land at very specific areas, you're barely ever gonna have a chance to use these. So because of that, really the only quote-unquote new AR in Fortnite is the heavy AR, and obviously it isn't brand new because it's been in the game before, but the adjustments Epic made to it basically make it almost an entirely new weapon, really. The old heavy AR did very high base damage per shot, close to 50 I believe with certain rarities, but to compensate for that it had a very low rate of fire and an absolute ton of bloom. The new version of the heavy follows that same general principle of strengths and weaknesses, but it now fires a decent amount faster, does a decent amount less base damage per shot, closer to around 35 to 40 now, and it also has slightly less bloom as well. So when it comes to abusing aim assist with this weapon, here's basically what I'd recommend. The combination of the weapon's rate of fire and bloom makes it so that at close slash medium range, you definitely want to be full spraying it like you would with a regular AR. But then, once you get past anything around medium-ish range, you want a single shot ADS tap fire like you may remember doing with the old heavy AR, and also, if possible, wait an extra half second before firing so you get first shot accuracy with the each shot. Even though the bloom isn't as bad as it once was with this weapon, if you try to just regularly fully auto fire at an enemy who's even somewhat far away, you're gonna need pretty much a miracle to hit anything more than one shot or so. And when it comes to the heavy AR's usability in general, I definitely think it's a decent AR, but I'm gonna take the regular ARs over it every day of the week. Speaking of the regular AR and the scar as well, I don't really need to say too much here about abusing aim assist with these because it's really the same as it's ever been. At close, medium, and even somewhat long range, you just want to fully auto fire while keeping the enemy in the middle of your crosshair, but then at super long range, that's when you probably want to tap fire a bit and let your first shot accuracy reset as much as possible. The next weapon category that I want to discuss in regards to abusing aim assist is the SMG. So much like with the ARs, the loot pool of SMGs is really as simple as it's ever been. You have the regular SMGs, the silenced SMGs, and the P90s. Now all three of those have received nerfs over the last two to three seasons that make them not quite as dominant as they were in seasons two and three, but there's a reason why a lot of players are saying that season five is a spray meta. I don't think it's like it used to be where you can get away with just carrying an AR and two SMGs, but even though the pumps and tacks were buffed a little bit at the beginning of the season, I think most people would agree that the shotgun category as a whole is still weaker overall because there aren't any pumps, so when the shotguns are weaker, that sort of has an unintended consequence of making SMGs stronger and more important in general. If you're a controller player, that's good news because SMGs are the main weapon category where you can kind of undoubtedly say that the 
better option is controller compared to mouse and keyboard. However, there is a clear disparity between the regular SMG slash P90 and the suppressed SMG when it comes to abusing aim assist. The regular SMG and P90 are absolutely perfect for barrel stuffing, and that's obviously due to their super high rate of fire and solid damage at point blank range. In Season 4, there was a little fear in doing that though because you could get one pumped, but in Season 5, you sure as heck aren't going to get one tacked. The charge also doesn't strike too much fear into you because the enemy will be dead by the time they get to full charge, and even though the Dragon's Breath could be a bit of a problem, not too many people really choose to carry that. The suppressed SMG though, plain and simple, isn't as good when it comes to abusing aim assist, mainly due to its lower rate of fire. Sure, it's still an SMG at the end of the day, but it just doesn't have the pop that the regular SMG and P90s do. So I think when you have a suppressed SMG, you really need to rely more on your shotgun and then truly only use it as a cleanup weapon. With the P90 or regular SMG though, if you can get right into your enemy's face, honestly that's probably more powerful than any shotgun in the game. And then the final weapon category here is of course going to be those shotguns. I actually made an entire video two days ago about my thoughts on the Season 5 shotgun meta, so go check it out if you haven't already seen it. But in here we're going to briefly talk about how to use the shotguns. So the best shotgun for abusing aim assist with is the TAC, and there really isn't a close second. At point blank range you want to stay fully on ADS, and as you're shooting, you also want to constantly be moving forward to get as close to the enemy as possible and therefore also increasing the strength of your aim assist as well. At anything outside of point blank range, you probably want a quick ADS ever so slightly before firing. This will decrease your crosshair size, therefore making you much more likely to deal higher damage. And also, since it slows down your sensitivity just a tad bit, it also makes it slightly easier to hit shots, at least in my opinion. For the Dragon's Breath shotgun, I don't really think I need to say too much. You get one shot, and if you end up missing it, now you're going to be subjected to a 4 plus second reload time. Therefore, you basically need to make sure that you're touching the enemy before you fire, and then as soon as you do, you better be ready to switch to your SMG and finish that guy off if you didn't one-shot him. And then finally for the charge shotgun, unfortunately this weapon is basically impossible to abuse aim assist with, because when you actually charge it up and hopefully reach full charge, it's been proven that for some reason you barely get any aim assist at all. No idea if this is intentional on Fortnite's part or if it's just a glitch, but that lack of aim assist once charged was discovered probably 4-5 to five months ago, and it's still exactly the same today. And that's a big reason why a lot of controller players still prefer the tack, even though they also think that the charge is statistically a little better. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you watched the entire thing, be sure to let me know with a comment down in the comment section below. Just like I asked you guys earlier, have you noticed any kind of change in aim assist since the beginning of Season 5? Be sure to leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, turn on post notifications, do whatever the heck you want, and I will catch you guys next time.